Everyone who has taken a chemistry class must have, at one point, learned about significant figures. Being essential to scientific research, it would be amiss if sig figs were not included in standard education. Because of this, my goal in this video is not to teach the rules associated with sig figs. Instead, I would like to share the results of my one-day research project about sig figs. My project concerns the sig figs associated with problems consisting of multiple operations. The reason I became interested in these is because in high school, I only learned the sig fig rules associated with single operation problems, not multi operation problems. Therefore, when given multi operation problems, I quietly assumed that multi operation problems can be solved by first breaking the problem into multiple single operation problems and then applying the sig figs I had learned. For example, I would first multiply these two numbers and round the product to the least number of sig figs. Then I would add this rounded product to the last number and finally round the sum to the least precise digit. When I came to college though, I was told by my teacher that my sig fig technique was incorrect. I was not allowed to round in intermediate steps. To simplify correctly, I would have to avoid rounding until I had simplified the equation completely. Consequently, I would have to keep track of sig figs and the least accurate digits on the side before using them to round. Finding the first method easier, I wondered if there really existed a case where the usage of each technique resulted in different answers. After trying many examples by hand, I became more and more convinced that my technique was equivalent to my teacher's. But just to be sure, I spent an entire day creating a Python algorithm which could quickly try thousands of examples. The program works by generating random inputs for the simple equation. I chose this equation because it contains multiple operations and would be easy to code. The program then applies the two techniques of intermediate and non-intermediate rounding to the inputs. If the absolute value of the difference of outputs equals zero, then the program does not record the inputs. However, if it does not, the program prints the inputs. After running the program several times, I realized that my technique was not just wrong, it was very wrong. Although the majority of the time both techniques output equivalent answers, there are hundreds of examples where they do not. I provided some here, and as you can see, it is not unreasonable to say that these inputs could be used in problems on a test. So from these results, I learned that intermediate rounding produces mistakes, but more generally, I learned a lesson about science. Science is based in trying to disprove beliefs. After making the assumption that my technique was just as effective as my teacher's, I had a choice to make. I could either hold on to my belief or actively try to disprove it. I chose the latter, and now that my program has disproved my assumption, I feel like a wiser individual and a true scientist. Thank you for watching.